Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. You know, I'm smart. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I would say smarter than average. My mom had me tested. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You, you seem like you don't believe that. Well, usually it's the, it's the other way it's when they have the test. Oh, I get it. Short bus? <laughs> Your window liquor. <laughs> Today, some signs that you are smarter than average and have a very high IQ. Hey, boo-boo. <laughs> That's next on Men Are So Smart. So how intelligent are you? I mean, really. If you find that most of these signs apply to you, you're probably smarter than the average person. And we'll tell you right now, no IQ test is necessary. Right. All right, so these are signs that you are smarter than average. Okay, first up, you're the oldest sibling. I am indeed. Uh, being the oldest sibling has several advantages, like being able to tell your younger brothers and sisters what to do. Like your homework. Yes. <laughs> Wash my car. Yeah. After analyzing soldiers' IQ tests, Norwegian researchers found that the oldest children had an average IQ of 103. That, yeah. That's Second true. born kids had an average IQ of 100. That's not much different. While the babies of the family had an average IQ of 99. So there's a small. Small difference. Mm -hmm. uh, oldest children have a unique relationship with their parents and younger siblings, which may explain the difference. Hmm. What were you? Uh, I'm the only child. Only, okay. Yeah, so um, I was pretty smart. You're left-handed. Being left-handed has a few benefits. For example, in 1995, New York-based journalist Maria Konnikova found that left-handed people are more creative than right-handed people. How did she find that out? It doesn't even say. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was just a, a guess or random. I don't know. Wow, what a I great feel survey. like left people handed left-handed people are smarter. It must be so. I said it. <laughs> well, it is true that if you're left-handed, yes, you use the right side of your brain more. Uh -huh. Right-handed people use the left side of your brain. And if I you believe, have a brain. And I believe the right side of your brain is the creative parts so it's possible that you could possibly be slightly smarter well she said it was true there you go there you have it uh next up you take drugs occasionally hmm okay not so much methamphetamine or you know anything like that uh and by no means are we suggesting that you should take illegal drugs of course not however it's interesting to note that according to a 2012 study so it's a few years old there's a link between intelligence and drugs Researchers looked at the drug uh, use habits of 6,000 people and conc concluded that occasional users were among those who had the highest IQs when they were 11 years old. That's strange. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, have you seen that they're doing research now that uh, psychedelic drugs help people with mental problems? I've not seen that. But I, that's the reason they, like LSD, was... That's what I'm saying. It was originally intended to be that type, of a, that type of a drug to help people with mental deficiencies. You drink alcohol regularly. These are signs that you're probably smarter than average. Drinking alcohol can also play a part in intelligence. And contrary to popular belief, drinking alcohol doesn't make us dumber. It's actually quite the opposite. After studying American and British people, scientists discovered that the participants with the highest results on intelligent tests in their youth were those who drank the most often as adults. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I don't think they're talking about Drink alcoholism. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think yeah. they're talking about that. Because I've, I've been there once or twice, yeah. and I didn't feel very smart afterwards. Not at all. Uh, the next one is that you don't overestimate yourself. It's a little fine line here. Uh, so if you've ever heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect, it's the phenomenon that occurs when less qualified people overestimate their abilities while extremely competent people underestimate their capabilities. Hmm. Uh, 
well, it's possible the same thing applies to intelligence. The most intelligent among us don't like to brag because they understand that the, there's much more that they still don't know. That's not necessarily the case for people with low IQs. What would Forrest Gump say about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, or Bobby Boucher. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a night owl. Are you a night owl? Uh, yeah. Not if, easy. if so, you're smarter than the early birds, according to a U of Madrid study. More specifically, your analytical and conceptual thinking skills are above average. In fact, people who go to bed in the wee hours of the morning are usually more social, extroverted, and creative than the rest of us. Throughout history, many famous people such as Marcel Proust, Charles Darwin, uh, and Elvis Presley <laughs> were known for staying up late. Who knows? Maybe you're the next Mozart. <laughs> pretty, pretty mama. <laughs> uh, next, you're funny. I know I am. Well, thank you. you no, me. Oh, yeah. Uh, laughter is good for your health and your intelligence. Researchers administered intelligence tests to 400 psychology students and realized that the students with the highest scores also had the best sense of humor. Uh, are comedians the next geniuses? Uh, you know, some I would think are. I mean... George Carlin. I, that was right on the tip of my tongue. I was right there. He was so perceptive that yep. his humor was spot on. Yep. So, I don't know. And, and you know what else, too? When you ask typical women on the street, not that I do this a lot, but should you happen to, what they are looking for qualities in a man, what do they always say? He needs to make me laugh. Right. You know? Yep. So, I think they do, in fact, go hand in hand. You learned to read early. Did you learn to read early? If so, or at all. you'll be happy to know that according to a British study, or those British people. They do a lot of study. They do. There. They should do less study and more work. A <laughs> uh, British study from 2012. Then you're probably smarter than the average Joe. Researchers analyzed the reading habits of 2,000 twins. They found that the twin who learned to read first generally had a higher score on cognitive ability tests. I think that goes without saying. Our list today, signs that mean you're probably smarter than average. Ronnie? Okay. You have a cat. I do have a cat. You do too. Or I do too. I have two. We have one. I'm twice as smart. <laughs> Uh, if you're looking for a pet and can't decide between a dog and a cat, this study from 2014 might help you decide. Researchers gave intelligence tests to school children who had cats and dogs and realized that the cat owners had higher IQs. Interesting. I'm trying to think of a solution here, why that would be. I mean, cats are very independent, obviously. Well, I think... If you choose a cat, you're choosing an animal that is 90% self-sufficient. And so, that's pretty smart. Yeah, I guess so. You have to give a lot more attention to dogs. <laughs> and so, you're anxious if you're smarter than average. Living with anxiety can be difficult. Mm -hmm. In many cases, it's also a sign of intelligence. In 2015, researchers administered different tests to 126 school children to determine their anxiety levels. They found that those with a tendency to worry a lot and ruminate had a more developed verbal, verbal intelligence than other participants. Hmm. Wow. I would say, you know what? I am I'm an anxious type person. I am too. I think about things that I'm going to have to do and I, I sweat about them a little yeah. bit. I don't. Uh, I always make them worse than they actually are. By the time you actually do it, uh, it's not. I, I just can't. It's like wow, I was completely worried about nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this one, I don't know. This one, yeah. Well, let's just we'll read it and then you be the judge. Uh, you're politically liberal. Hmm. Liberal. 
so I had to go there. The party you vote for says more than you may think about your intelligence. In one study, evolutionary psychologist Dr. Satoshi Kanazawa stated that children who got the best scores on an intelligence test were also more likely to be political liberal as adults. Uh, there's an argument to use or not during your next political debate. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, I need to see more results from this study. Because it seems like, and I guess part of the problem is now that people that uh, we're looking at liberal extremism when we think about people that are not, they're not using common sense. And so, I don't know, yeah, maybe if you're slightly more liberal than conservative, maybe that might be true. But I think at, I the, got it. at the far extremes. I know what it is. Boy, I'm going to stereotype when I say this, though. <laughs> Traditionally, professors at universities tend to be more liberal. Yeah. Uh, and there are lots of memes that you'll see on social media about just that. And these are the people that are teaching children. And perhaps maybe that's where that stems from. Can't be sure. You yeah. took music lessons as a child. Oh, I did. I did too. Well, kind of. Uh, you may have hated your violin or piano lessons when you were a kid, but they probably made you smarter. An 04 study showed that nine-year-old children who had taken piano or singing lessons increased their IQs in just nine months. Huh? Scientists didn't observe the same effect in children taking drama classes or who didn't take any lessons at all. However, it's important to note that a 13 study found that children who take music lessons are more likely to have higher than average intelligence to begin with. So, and I've seen some studies that people who play an instrument currently are, they're able to uh, multitask better. Uh, they tend to have, be a little bit smarter. And I know you and I are both guitar players. Um, you have to be able to do several things oh, yeah. at the same time, as well as look ahead a little bit to the chorus, mm -hmm. the next verse, the bridge, uh, and sing along with the song. Stay on beat. Stay on beat. There's a lot of things clicking at the same time. And yeah, if you are not uh, quite up to speed, that may be tough. You know, I mentioned this once before in a previous show. My son is left-handed, my son Nick, but I made him learn to play guitar right-handed. Uh, and imagine what that must have been like. Yeah. Because it's just not natural. Right. At when you're right-handed and playing that way, yeah. that's still really unnatural when you're moving your left fingers because right. you're not as dexterous maybe as your right hand. But it's just the opposite for him. And he's an excellent guitar player. Very good. Wow. Yeah. All right, this one I'm interested in. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, was it me? I thought I just... Uh, no. Okay. <coughs> so, you lost your virginity late. Hmm. What's late? Well, eleven thirty depends. <laughs> I guess like fourteen if you're in Alabama. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, Thanks. So we just lost all of our Alabama <laughs> audience. Uh, all right. of them. <laughs> yeah, we all know the cliche about the nerd who's still a virgin in university. Uh, according to recent studies, it appears that there's some truth to the stereotype. Okay. Researchers discovered that students at the most prestigious universities in the world, such as MIT, wow, they just threw that one right out there. How yeah, about, they did. It how Harvard or Yale or yeah. uh, had a lower, a lower number of sexual partners than the average. There are also more virgins in these renowned renowned schools than in educational institution, other inst uh, educational institutions. The observation can be explained in part by the fact that testosterone negatively influences the chemical process in the body that control intelligence. The more testosterone a man has, the less intelligent he is. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, just say, let's just say football players. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Secondly, more intelligent students are aware of the risks associated with sex. 
and consequently have fewer sexual relationships. Well, that just wasn't true in the 70s. Though. No, it wasn't. No, it was a free-for-all. Yeah. Uh, lastly, they simply spend more time studying than others and have less time to meet people. Uh, well, this one begs the, com- the topic of wow. the question. Yeah. How old were you? 16. I was? As soon as I got a car. 16. Yeah. Yep. As soon as you got a car, then it opens up a whole new world. And you know, can I tell you a little story, too? Sure. The girl that I lost my virginity to mm-hmm. and was my first and I thought about for all these years. Well, we recently got together and had a couple of drinks. And I came to find out that I was, she was my first, but I wasn't hers. Yeah. Yep. I thought I was the whole time. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. I have a very similar, yeah, and I, my first, uh, I also thought, or at least at the time she told me I was her first, uh-huh. but I've had people say uh, that knew her obviously a little more intimately and said, not really, mm, no, not so much. No, and certainly not the last. Yes. Yeah. All right. So in our topic today of signs, you're probably smarter than average. You have blue eyes. Check it. That's why we got the name of the show, Man yep. So Smart. Right there. The color of your eyes can say a lot about your intelligence. Apparently, people with light colored eyes are better at strategic activities. While people with brown eyes have a better response time. In other words, someone with blue eyes is more likely to excel in science, while someone with darker eyes will fare better at sports. Huh. Hmm. Wow. Just think, you could have been better had you had brown eyes. Could have been a, a better football player. Don't it make your brown eyes blue? <laughs> or donuts make your brown eyes blue? Uh, with sprinkles. Because sprinkles, sprinkles are for, are for winners. winners. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up with this one. All right. Uh, you're quiet. No, no, I'm not. No, you're not. That's true. Uh, if you're the type of person who would rather listen than talk at parties or events, you're probably smarter than most. In fact, most reserved men and women prefer to take the time to analyze a situation before speaking. That is smart. There's some merit to that. Uh, that's a sign of intelligence because they rarely say something they regret later. Now, when I go to, I'm not a, I'm not really a social butterfly, and when we go to a party, I do like to just kind of sit in the background and take in a conversation, and it's like, okay, these guys are talking about crap that I care nothing about, Mm -hmm. on to the next group, right? until I find a group that's talking about something that I can relate to, Mm -hmm. then I just wait my turn until there's a lull in the conversation. And then I might throw in whatever it is that I have to say. I'm more of the life of the party. Yep. That's just the way it is. Yep. Um, I remember you at a, uh, what the hell did they call those uh, fat, fat? Oh, fat party. Yeah. Fat, fat, fat Friday. Friday after third Thanksgiving. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and you were, it's, and people are just kind of naturally drawn to you a little bit when you walk in. Uh, everyone swings their head around. Oh, Lou's here. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a lot of pressure that goes on with that, Ronnie, honestly. Yeah, you know, and you know how I am about people in my old age, right? So, um, it's hard, it's it's like a juggling act. People expect me to be one way, right? And I'm not necessarily that way, at least all the time. Yep, but uh, there again, there's some merit to that. Uh, a smarter person likes to sit back, you know what they say, you have two ears and one mouth, so you can listen twice as much as he talk. Yeah, that's you know, who says that. Judge Judy. Oh, does she? Thank you, Judge Judy. Uh, as always. a bit of wisdom. I guess we'll plug in Judge Judy's picture there. <laughs> I've saved it because you mentioned her so much. <laughs> All right, so today we've talked about signs that mean you're smarter than average. The one we didn't get to, which is, this is number 15. The one we didn't get to is you watch this show. Oh, boy, that's that should have been number See, one. it is. Yep, right should have been number one. If you watch this show, that's a pretty good sign. You're probably smarter than average. Uh, and after 475 shows, Ronnie. We would know. And we would. <laughs> Just think of how many Saturdays that was. A couple. <laughs> All right. So we're glad that you joined us today for the show. 
Uh, don't forget to join us. Uh, our new schedule of shows will be as follows. Tuesday morning mm -hmm. at 6 a.m. Yep. Pacific. Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific. And Sunday morning mass, which you will see live Sunday mornings starting at 7 a.m. on the West Coast. Correct. Uh, we have stickers for our show that we think you might like to have. They're kind of collector's items, not to mention the fact that it's a limited uh, print of, yep. of, the, of these. And uh, all you have to do to get one, and I'll try to show you one here real quick. Uh, all you have to do to get one is send us $5 to our PayPal account, which is paypal.me slash men are so smart. And when you do, don't forget to give us your address so we can mail it to you. It's kind of important. We pay for it. Uh, yeah, yep. So can't really email it. these. No. <laughs> Be pretty tough to do that. Yep. And look to the future because we're working on some merchandise right now as we speak. Bobbleheads are still on the table. Not sure if we're going to get to those right away. Kind of, kind of pricey. They may be down the road just a yeah, little bit. I'm not sure most of our viewers are going to want to buckle buckle down. It's going to probably be at least a hundred dollars oh, per at, bobblehead, at least at the very least. Well, the way that they get you on those bobbleheads is they have to do a prototype, right? And they make that at such a price that you're pretty much invested in the project at that point, yeah. and you've got to get them done. And uh, honestly, it would be about a hundred dollars, uh, and that's for a two-person bobblehead. Right. Ronnie and I, at a desk, is what I told them I right. really wanted. Yeah, uh, they don't send you the prototype picture; they just tell you how much that's going to cost. Right, and you know what? If I saw a picture, I could say yay or nay, mm -hmm. but they don't do that. No, they won't do that. So that's the, that is where they get you. However, what they do is they give you two or three opportunities to change things. Oh, okay. You know, well, maybe Ronnie's hair didn't come out exactly right, so they're going to take a little off of here, or lose mustache is unseeable. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, kind of. There you go. All right, uh, also, our website is menaresosmart.com. Got to get out of here. Uh, Ronnie, um, 49ers play in about an hour. All right, so we gots to go. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. And this has been Men Are So Smart.